Mr. President, as I watched my grade school children react to your campaign last summer, I couldn't help but recognize that there hasn't been that level of enthusiasm the young children for presidential politics since I was a young child in grade school and that was John F. Kennedy's campaign. Now, as I listen to your address before the National Academies, I see another wonderful opportunity to echo the powerful events of that era. Living through the space era shaped my life and the life of countless baby boomers. Space, science, these were topics of conversation at the dinner table and classrooms across America. We didn't all become astronauts, we didn't all become aerospace engineers, but the fascination with the project led us to take math seriously, science seriously, and that's affected the lives of all of those who grew up in that period. Your bold challenge to achieve energy sustainability may have exactly the same powerful influence on young Americans and provide not only the technologies to solve our energy problems, but the workforce in the future that will continue to innovate for America. Asserting the federal government's role in supporting basic research is an important first step to reestablishing America as a global innovator. But in many respects, this is a different America than in post-World War II. Then, our major corporations had the resources and the vision to create vibrant industrial research and development centers like RCA Sarnoff Labs, Westinghouse Research, and of course, Bell Laboratories. These were the places that invented the transistor, integrated circuits, color televisions, automatic transmissions, and countless other products and services that drove the American economy. If this country is to derive an economic benefit from its investments in basic scientific research, we need to understand the important difference between discovery and invention. It's the role of the scientist to observe and explain the world as we know it. It's the role of the engineer to invent the world as we wish it to be. So as we hone a new science policy for America, let us not forget to also hone an innovation policy, one that reasserts America as a producer nation. Many of our global competitors have recognized this need. They've invested in a variety of public-private partnerships that advance the interest of their core industries as a strategic asset, and the results speak for themselves. Invariably, these approaches involve strong coupling between universities built around a science and technology core mission. I can speak for one, NJIT, New Jersey's Science and Technology University. We stand ready to work with your administration to ensure that scientific discovery ends up as innovative American products and services. Innovation that pushes the edge of knowledge and once again allows us to dream.